so now we solve the miscellaneous exercise i'll go to question number 2 directly in each of the following determine whether the statement is true or false and prove it if it is true false given example so first question is here x is a member of a set a is a member of set b then x belongs to b this is a question now we want to see whether this is true or false so let me take an example first i'll take a equals to one set having 1 comma 2 now i need to take b in such a way that a must be in this so i'll take b equals to this member that is 1 comma 2 then suppose i'll take 3 or you can take 4 so here A belongs to B. One is a member of A. Then A belongs to B. But you can see that one is not a member of B. So this is not true. Therefore, the given statement is false. Statement is false because of this. There's a reason here. i could find two sets for which these two are true but this is not true one is not a member of b remember second one if i go to second example here if a is a subset of b that is every member of a is in b b entirely contained in c then a belongs to c so we want to see this so again let's take a equals to here for example 1 comma 2 b i'll take as unit this condition a is a subset of b so i'll take for example 1 2 3 3 members anything you can take just randomly i'm taking now i'll take c uh, in such a way that b must be member of c so b entirely contained in c and uh, i'll put for example 4 here anything so it satisfy this condition a is a subset of b b is entirely contained in c but you can see that this condition is not true here uh, a is not a member of c that a is a doesn't belongs to c that 1 comma 2 is not a member of this this much is not present in this so this statement is also false this is false because of this so third question if a is a subset of b b is a subset of c then a is a subset of c now what this says a is a subset of b means like this every member of a is present in b and b is a subset of c that means c is a bigger set than b so it's like this so every member of a is in b every member of b is in c then clearly you can see that every member of a is present in c so this is true so whenever a is a subset of b b is a subset of c then a is always subset of c this means like b is bigger than a c is bigger than b then obviously c will be bigger than a so this is always true by this venn diagram now here this fourth result if a is not a subset of b b is not a subset of c then a is not a subset of c so let's take 
one two here it is not a subset of for example two three four so this is like set a this is like set b every member of this is not present in this here two three four is not a subset of let me put uh, one two and four for example so this is b this is c so b is not a subset of c every member of b is not present in c but if you notice here but if you notice a is a subset of c every member of a is present in c one two both are present in c so this is not true so this is false right? because of this this is the example why this is false fifth sixth i leave it for you try for you try this is for you the main question question number three here you are given here in third question you are given that a union b equals to a union c and a intersection b equals to a intersection c these two things we are given and we we prove this we prove b equals to c this is what we want to prove now if you recall equality of two sets two sets x equals to y if and only if, if you remember every member of x must be in y and reversely every member of y must be in x right so to show that these two sets are equal we need to prove these two things x is a subset of y and reverse y is a subset of x if i show this i can say that these two sets are equal so we prove indirectly these two things b is a subset of c and c is a subset of b once you prove these two things then we can say that these two sets are equal without taking an example this is like theorem now to show that b, for example first b is a subset of c i need to prove that every member of b is in c so let x be a member of b it's any member remember and i'll show that this any member is present in c with these two things it implies x must be present in a union b obviously if it is in b it must be present in a union b because union contains member of b or a so if it is in b it must be present in a union b now if x is present in a union b you are given that a union b is same as a union c so it must be in this this is given remember now if x is present in a union c it implies x is in a or x is in c union means either it is in the first set or in second set now if let's let's consider two possibility if x is in a it was already in b so if you use this two if i use this and this we can say that x must be in a intersection b x was already in b now you are saying that x is in a so it must be present in both both means intersection you are given that a intersection b equals to a intersection c so it implies x must be present in a intersection c now it is present in a intersection c it means it must be present in both so it implies x must be in c so what you have shown here ultimately whenever one member is present in b then it must be present in c either in this case or in this case so therefore you can say that b must be subset of c this is one i repeat 
from here we want to show that two sets are equal so we need to prove these two things b is a subset of c and c is a subset of b now first to show that i have taken one any member from b x means any member of b now if x is present in b it must be present in union because union means member of b or a so it has to be in b you are already given that a union b equals to a union c this is given so x must be in a union c if it is in union it must be in a or in c so in this case you got the member in c but what about this here x was in b now you are saying in a so that means x must be present in both both means intersection so x must be in a intersection b you are already given that a intersection b equals to a intersection c if you look at this that means x is in a intersection c so here you can say that it must be in a as well as c it was already in a so now you can say that it must be present in c so what you have shown whenever when any member is present in b then it must be present in c either this case or this case Therefore, you can say that every member of B is present in C. So, therefore, B is a subset of C. Okay. So, same way, similarly, you can just write directly. Similarly, you can show that C is a subset of B. So, I will call that S2. And from 1 and 2, uh, you can say that B equals to C. And proved. next question fourth question show that the following four statements are equal and you are given four statements a is a subset of b secondly a minus b equals to phi third one a union b equals to b and fourth one a intersection b equals to a this this Four are equivalent. Equivalent means if you know one, so if I start one, you can do the second one. If I start with second one, I can get the third one. If I start with third one, I can get the fourth one. That way. So if you know one, you can get the the other three. That's the meaning of equivalent. Equivalent means you start with one, you can get the other one. You start with second one, you can get the third one. You start with third one, you will get the fourth one. So first, let me start with first one. So first, I'll start with one. So this is given. A is a subset of B. And to prove, you want to prove this. A minus B equals to null set. I repeat meaning of equivalent means if you know one you can get the other one so if I start with this so this is given to you you will prove this in the next part I'll start with this I'll prove this in the next part I'll start with this and I'll prove this so here I've started with this that means this is given to you and will show that a minus b equals to null set so if I start with this as a is a subset of b that means every member of a is in b is in b now recall a minus b what is a minus b that is members of a not in b but here every member of A is in B. A minus B says that every me member of A which are not in B. So here you cannot find any member which is not in B. So naturally A minus B is null set. Like this you see roughly if I take here 1, 2, 3. 1, 2 for example. And if I take here 1, 2, 3. Then A minus B is all members of a which are not in b but here every member is in this so this is five so therefore this is proved one part <clears throat> now i'll start with second so what is given 
a minus b equals to null set this is given and we prove what we prove here a union b equals to b <coughs> now again if i go back to given data here so next one here. as a minus b is 5 it means every member of a must be in b must be in b therefore uh, b is a bigger set and therefore you can say that a union b equals to b so this is proved once this is a bigger set like this here if i take one two and if i take here one two three four this is a this is b so you can see that a union b will be b for example you can notice this now third one here you are given that a union b equals to b and to prove a intersection b equals to a now from this data uh, as uh, from this from from a union b equals to b you can say that every member of a must be in b therefore a is a smaller set smaller set and therefore if i take their common it must be a like this if i have here 3 4 this is a and if i take b equals to 3 4 5 then obviously their intersection will be a so this is proved the last part fourth part that is you are given a intersection b equals to a and to prove a is a subset of b here so this is obvious you obvious you just try this for you fifth question so next question you're given a is a subset of b this is given to you and we want to prove this to prove c minus b is a subset of c minus a this is what we want to prove so this is one set this is the other set you want to prove that every member of this must be in this now you know technique so i'll take one member x from c minus b and at the end i'll show that that x must be present in c minus a this is what we want to do i repeat we want to show that one set is a subset of the other set so i'll take one member from this we usually call that as x and i'll show that that x must be present in the other set so every member of this set must be in this and therefore you can say that c minus b is a subset of c minus a is proved right that's what and all in all about the proof now come back to this what's the meaning of x belongs to c minus b that means x is in b but x is uh, not a, sorry x is in c but it is not a member of b now you recall the given information you are given that a is a subset of b 
here you are saying that x is not present in b so obviously x cannot be present in a because this is a bigger set if an element is not present in bigger set it cannot be in a smaller set so it implies you can say that x is a member of c but x is not a member of a i repeat this argument you are given that a is a subset of b here you are saying that x is not a member of b b is a bigger set if an element is not present in bigger set it cannot be present in a in case if x is a member of a then obviously x would be in b but that contradicts this because you are saying that x is not in a so x cannot be uh, in a remember so now what you have concluded x is in c and it is not in a so therefore by definition x must be present in c minus a what is c minus a all members of c but not in a so we have this so finally what you have proved whenever x is in c minus b then x is in c minus a therefore c minus b is a subset of c minus a is proved next question you are given here that pa equals to pb that is power set of a equals to power set of b and to prove to prove a equals to b so you know to prove a equals to b we need to prove these two things we need to prove if you recall two things which two things first set is a subset of the second one and conversely second set is a subset of the first one if we can show this we can say that these two sets are actually equal okay so we prove one we write similarly second one and therefore these two sets are equal now recall what is p of a it is nothing but the set of all subsets of a if you remember p of a means such list like 5 then a and so on then all subsets of uh, you know a here this is p of a so you can see that a must be present in p of a just go back to power set you will realize what is p of a p of a represent set of all the subsets of a so a must be present in p of a obviously therefore we have this this just follows from the definition of p of a and therefore a must be in p of b why because this is given p of a equals to p of b now a is present in p of b means what this a must be subset of b because p of b is a set of all the subset if one member is present in this you can say that a must be subset of b suppose if i put one member here then it must be subset of this because this set always consisting of all the subsets so here you are saying that a belongs to p of b that means this set must be subset of this so therefore what you have proved a is a subset of b and similarly similarly you can show that b is a subset of a reverse way so this is one this so from one and two you can say that a equals to b so i repeat this proof you want to show that a equals to b so you need to show that a is a subset of b and b is subset of a now go back to p of a it is set of all subsets of a p of a is like this phi a and all other subsets of a remember other subsets of a so obviously a must be present in p of a but p of a equals to p of b so therefore a must be in p of b now again one set is present in power set of b suppose if here i'll put some subset that means this must be subset of a so here you can say that a must be subset of b similarly you can show that b is a subset of a and therefore a equals to b so question number seven here 
uh, it's not true you take uh, a equals to for example 1 b equals to 2 3 therefore a in and b would be 1 2 3 so very easily we will verify that LHS is not equals to RHS even by counting the members also you can see here P of A would have two members here four members so five on the other side you will have eight so this much you can notice the, there is nothing special about one two three you can choose any members and you will notice that that LHS is not equals to RHS now next question number eight so there are two sub questions the first one prove that a equals to a intersection b union a difference b you want to prove this now you want to show that this is equals to this so you can do one by one diagrams you can just notice the Venn diagrams and you will see that these two sets are equal. You know, if I take two sets here A and B, so A intersection B is this portion. This is A intersection B. A difference B is this portion. You know, this is A difference B. Now you know this much very well. This is A difference B. Union means you combine. So if I combine A minus B, and A intersection B. If I combine this dotted portion and shaded portion, you will get the A. So obviously A. So this is proved. This is one way to show this. Alternatively, what you can do is this by properties. I'll start with RHS. That is this portion. A intersection B union A difference B. Now we, we already listed in the properties of the sets if you remember whenever your difference you can replace by this A intersection B dash you know this A minus B is always A intersection B dash complement of the second set and difference become intersection here so this is always true now you you see that <coughs> Both the brackets are having intersection operation. And this much is common. A intersection is common. You can find this much common. A intersection I'll take common. This portion I'll find common. So what I'll get inside the bracket? Remaining things. That is B union B dash. A intersection you will find common so here your B union B dash this is indirectly distributive property remember go back to distributive property you will realize distributive properties what I did I repeat taking A intersection common so you have B union as it is B dash now union of set and its complement is always universal set so A intersection universal set that you know a union a dash is always universal set and these also you know this is bigger set this is smaller set so answer will be a always universal set it's this and a means this set so what's a common in this two that is a so that is lhs so this is always true so now we prove this so by Venn diagram this is obvious by Venn diagram this is obvious this is A this is B for two sets this is set A B minus this is set A this dotted portion is B minus A this is B minus A Union means you combine these two. So if I combine these two, A union B minus A, you will get that entire union, that is A union B. This is just by Venn diagrams. What I'll do, I'll use the properties of the sets. <coughs> so again, I'll start with here. 
left hand side which is a union b minus a this commonly used properties you can replace b minus a by b intersection a dash you know this b minus a is b intersection a dash in difference is placed by intersection and here instead of a you have a dash you know, know this now outside and inside your different operations so we open this bracket so this is a union b intersection a union a dash this is again distributive property in the previous sum you have used reverse way there from this step you wrote this now here we are doing reverse what i did i've just opened the bracket a union b intersection a union a dash you know this this is always a union b intersection you know this is universal set that you know now this is one set this is universal set universal set is always largest set so if you take intersection of these two this is a smaller set so answer will be a union b which is rhs if you see this you know it this is rectangle you you know it union means this portion so what's the common in this two? This is a smaller set. This rectangle is always a bigger set. So common in this two is just this shaded portion that is A union B which is RHS. So ninth first, there you are asked to prove, prove that A union A intersection B equals to A. If you remember this is one of the known standard property. And you are strictly asked by properties only, not by Venn diagrams. Now, if you observe these two sets on LHS, the one is A intersection B and the other one is A. So, if you go back to list of the properties, remember this is always true. If you recall this, intersection is always member of a remember so this is always true a intersection b is always subset of a look at this venn diagram this is a circle of a and this is a intersection b so intersection is contained in the circle of a so a intersection b is always subset of a and you know if x is a subset of y then their union is a bigger set you know this now this is a subset of this so if i take union of these two you will get the bigger set so therefore a intersection b union i'll take a then answer will be bigger set which is a so proved here what is important observation is this intersection is always subset of a look at this venn diagram this is a this is intersection now you know this property if one set is a subset of the other one then their union is a bigger set so we have this so here this is a bigger set so if i put union between these two then the answer will be a and therefore proved now here second one to prove tp means to prove a intersection a union b equals to a so here again you look at these two sets one is union the other one is a so this is for example set a this is set b this is union and this is set a so clearly we have already noted this earlier a is always subset of a union b even we can write these also b is a subset of a union b but we don't want this we just need this that's why we have written this now and you also know this if x is a subset of y i need intersection then x intersection y is smaller set which is x if i use this result from this you can say that a intersection a union b the answer will be smaller set which is a and therefore proud
tenth question question number 10 uh, you you are show that a intersection b equals to a intersection c it does not imply b equals to c that means if you have this you cannot say that these two sets are always equal b and c okay. that means this says that you cannot cancel a from both the sets so you can take an example whenever you want to prove that something is not true you can take an example so let's take a equals to uh, for example here i have chosen one two three b i'll take for example 2, 3. So what is A intersection B? That is 2, 3. Now C I'll take in such a way that so here A intersection B is 2, 3. Now C I'll, I'll choose in such a way that A intersection C has to be 2, comma 3. So I'll put 2, 3 because I need this. Now I want other than B so you can put 4 here so you can see these two sets are equal A intersection B is 2 3 A intersection C is also 2 3 but B is not equals to C but B is not equals to C right? so that cancellation doesn't hold similarly you should try this this for you uh, try this a union B equals to A union C. It again does not implies B equals to C. Try this. Now, this is for you. So please see this. You can find appropriate example that these two are equal, but B is not equals to C, as I shown here. So here you are given these two things A intersection X equals to B intersection X equals to phi A union X equals to B union X for some set X for set X and you are asked to prove that A equals to B. I'll use the properties. I'll not use here A is a subset of B and B is a subset of A. So let me start with LHS here A. Now, this A you can write as A union A intersection X. If you remember, this is that absorption properties, absorption laws, if you remember. Rep outside and inside, you should have different operation, then repeated set should be your answer. Why I place here A intersection X? Because I know A intersection X. That's why I have placed this. So this is that absorption law. Now outside and inside your different operations. So distributive property A union A intersection A union X. Which property? Distributive property. Simply opening of the bracket A union A intersection A union X. Now this you know this is just A intersection you are already given that a union x is phi so you can put phi or you can just write b intersection uh, b intersection here x so here a union x is sorry b union x so here your b union x these two are equal this is given remember these two sets are equal now again I'll use distributive property because these two operations are different so A intersection B union A intersection X I repeat here distributive property A intersection B union A intersection X now A intersection is actually phi but if you want you can write b intersection x also now more or less we do reverse so instead of this you can write b intersection x these two are equal this is again given remember now reverse step take this much common what is common here b intersection is common this is common in this two 
so I'll take uh, B intersection common so what I'll get inside the bracket A union X this is distributive property distributive this much I have taken common B intersection so A you are left from this union as it is X you are left from here now again A union X you can place it by A union X you can place it by B union X this is also given so now outside and inside different operations the repeated set is B so B is your answer this is your RHS absorption property the one you had started in the beginning so this way we can prove there are some other ways also but I did this way B intersection B union X so here B is repeated set outside and inside if you have different operations then answer will be just B question number 12 you are asked to find three sets for which A intersection B is non-empty B intersection C should be non-empty C intersection A should not be empty but A intersection B intersection should be empty that means they should not be common in all three here they should have some common so you can find number of examples suppose I'll take one two here here I'll take uh, two three so there is two common C equals to I'll take uh, for example 3 4 3 4 and I need one common here so I'll put uh, uh, here for example uh, let's see so let me put one here so you can see that A intersection B is 2 B intersection C is 3 and A intersection C is uh, one here but if you find a intersection B intersection C so there is no common in all three two is not common in all three is not common in all and one is also not common in all this is five you can find many examples this is just for your information this three set satisfies this three conditions remember you can check next I'll go to example number 15 here so question number 15 in a survey of 60 people so total number of people is 60 it was found that 25 people read newspaper H 26 read newspaper T 26 newspaper I so there are three sets like A, B and C. 9 read both H and I. Both means intersection you know. 11 read both H and T. So this is again intersection. 8 read T and I. This is again intersection. 3 read all three newspaper. All three means intersection all the three newspaper H, I and T. You want to answer these two questions. The first question is number of people who read at least one newspaper. At least means either one or two or three. So you are asked union of all the three newspapers. So for that you have prepared formula. If you, Even if you rem rem remember I already told you at least means union. So that you know second question which is important number of people who read exactly one newspaper so i want to answer this mainly here so let me see this so from the data universal said as 60 people reading newspaper h 25 people reading newspaper t 26 people reading newspaper i 26 people reading newspaper h and i that is 9 people reading newspaper H and T and means intersection 11 people reading newspaper T and I and means intersection which is 8 and all three 
that is H, T and I. All three means intersection of this which is 3. Now first question, the required uh, number of people, required number of people that is at least and at least means union that is H union T union I. So for that you have prepared formula and you will get the answer that is 52 that you know. The important one is second question. I will go to second question. Right. This is not big task. N of H plus N of T plus N of I minus 9 minus 11 minus 8 and plus 3. So we will get this. So that that is very obvious. Just I wanted to explain you only one thing that at least stand for union. Union means at least that is given in the question. Already explained earlier also. So at least means union here. So for second question, I'll just draw a Venn diagram. From there, you can answer it very easily. You have prepared formula also. You can refer our material. You will find the prepared formula. But I'll I'll just answer from the Venn diagram. So you have three sets: people reading newspaper H, people reading newspaper T, and people reading newspaper I. So as per the data, 25, that is in entire set H, 26, that is in entire set T, 26, that is in entire set I. Uh, now people reading newspaper H and I, which is 9, H and I, that is in entire you have 9 here. That includes these also, remember. Then people reading T and I which is 8 that includes this also remember this 8 people reading H and T which is 11 here and all 3 that is middle portion this is 3 now what is asked in the question number of people who read exactly one newspaper exactly one newspaper means either this or this or this so number of people reading exactly one newspaper that is what we want so I'll just answer from the Venn diagram so only H plus only T plus only I only means this portion only so which is 25 minus this portion now total has here 11 this has 3 so this is 11 minus 3 this portion this is 3 so here plus 3 and this portion has 9 so this is 9 minus 3 which is uh, you know 6 so what I did if I draw here one more diagram here this H had 25 members I counted in this now total has 11 this portion has 3 so this portion will have 11 minus 3 which is 8 plus the member of this which is 3 now this entire portion has 9 this minus I drop this so this portion has 9 minus 3 same thing you can do for t so 26 minus you know 11 minus 3 11 minus 3 which is 8 plus 3 and this portion that is 8 minus 3 which is 5 and now if i come to only i that was t that is 26 minus this portion 8 minus 3 which is 5 plus this was 3 plus 9 minus 3 which is 6 right? so this represent only H as I explained here this represent only T if I show this again here see this is entire T which has 26 members 
this portion is 11 but this portion is 3 so this portion is 11 minus 3 which is 8 middle portion is 3 now this entire portion has 8 so this portion is 8 minus 3 which is 5 in same way for uh, this I remember I hope this is clear to you okay, so here you will get 8 here you will get 10 and here you will get 12 so you will get the 30 here so this gives you number of people who read exactly one newspaper